Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. And I'm going to be talking with somebody, I think I've known Carrie Samuels for eight years, seven years. <laughs> it's been, it's been a minute. And, and once upon a time, she was on a tele-summit that I did during a really transitional time. And it was beautiful because I got to connect with masters of what they did. And so here we are. I would say full circle, but we have so much life left to live. <laughs> There's going to be many more circles for us to bob and weave in and out of. But she's here. And it, it feels like to me a really auspicious time. So in case you don't know about her brilliance, let me share a little bit. Carrie Samuels is an intuitive counselor and she's a happiness coach. I like that. That makes me feel happy already. And she helps people reclaim their natural intuition so they can truly thrive. If there's an area in your life that needs more joy, Carrie can shed joy in the dark places, light in the dark places, and help lift your spirits with love. Using the unique blueprint encoded in your name and birth date, she can illuminate your destiny as well as your past life memories, childhood programming, and the specific subconscious beliefs that are blocking you from abundance. With the assistance of her spirit guides and archangels, she helps liberate you from self-sabotaging fears and emotions so you can fulfill your soul's purpose and shine your light in the world. With almost 2 million views on YouTube, she has become a go-to resource for people seeking practical tools for magical living. And it is her joy to use her gifts to help you discover yours. Her website is her name to find out more. It's K-A-R-I Samuels, like in the Bible, S-A-M-U-E-L-S <laughs> dot -E com. And Carrie Samuels, welcome to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here with you with all our circles and loops and infinity symbols and all kinds of geometric sacred geometry that we're weaving. Thank you so much. Uh, joy to have you and reconnect with you. And I just want to start, I understand that you recently left us in California and you had a big move. How is that going? I'm actually in transition of moving. So okay. Um, what, what happened was I posted on Facebook that we found a house that we signed a lease for, mm. um, up in Portland. And so, um, we came home and now we're in the packing phase. <laughs> so it's going great. But you know, I've been looking for, um, a, a new home and a new place to live for a while. It's been a bit of a journey, you know, the past, uh, that was like, everyone did some soul searching in the past couple of years. And in a way that was where my soul searching was, was like, where do I want to live? What kind of lifestyle do I want? Um, and so it's, it was actually a journey. And, and I think the picture that you saw, I'm all about signs and symbols, right? So um, we signed, you know, there's this place I saw on Zillow and we went up, we had, we flew within 24 hours. We did this like rush, you know, plain because we were just looking online and then we found something we thought and wanted to see it in person and just 24 hours went up there and um we saw the place signed the lease and right after we signed the lease um there was this gigantic rainbow oh. <laughs> and so um that was a wonderful sign it's funny and then i took pictures with um, me and my husband and me and my best friend who lives up there and then right after the pictures, the rainbow went away. It was funny. It was just like, it was in that moment. And so it was all about the divine timing in that moment as well. So I'm all about divine timing. And you're so connected. I would think that that would be a moment where you feel you've seen something, you're taking all this action. Yeah. You, drive, you have a feeling and a sense about what you're seeing and the location. Yeah. And Thing, and then there's a rainbow. <laughs> I'm your best friend. <laughs> I know. Very big ticket items right there. It, you know, I, I and I teach people how to follow signs and synchronicities and symbols. So mm -hmm. there were a lot of animal messengers that um, came into my life to help guide me on this journey as well. A lot of animal messengers. And so that was one of the things I paid attention to, as well as dreams. Like I had a lot of dreams that revealed to me what was not a good choice for me and what was a good choice for me. So 
Um, even when my conscious mind thought it wanted something, um, my subconscious mind is like, no, you don't. <laughs> so, um, like I said, it's been a journey. My ego and my soul had to find a, uh, ah, a the, the boardroom the, meeting. So everyone yeah. has a say. And yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. Well, I'm going to keep following you. I think it's wonderful. Moves are big, huge shifts. Uh, they, they really shake things up. And I also think it's really important, you know, to mm -hmm. location, location, location. It does make a difference. Yeah, I got angel bumps when you said that about move, you know, shaking things up. And, um, you know, my life here has gotten very co comfortable and nice, but in a way that's part of why my soul wants me to keep moving because, um, you know, what's so fun when you make a change. I remember on my plane here to San Diego when I was living in Pittsburgh, I'd just given up my office job and flew out to San Diego, like on a, on a, on a wing and a prayer. <laughs> and, um, uh, to start this life, to be um, a spiritual teacher uh, as my vocation um, without the support of a day job, right? Like this is, this is my livelihood. And um, I remember being on the plane and just thinking, wow, there's all these soulmates that I haven't met yet. And it's such a fun, mm -hmm. fun thing to like think about. Like there's people that are part of your destiny that are there for you. And, and, and as you make these, um, as you take a risk on yourself and you, and you, and you believe in your dreams and you dare to dream that you get to connect with your destiny, do you know? And, and, and that if you didn't dare to dream and you didn't take a chance on yourself, all these aspects, like destiny is not in stone. We have to listen to the call and we have to, um, answer right you have to take those chances and you do have to dare to dream and you do have to say okay i'm giving up my day job i'm just going to do this you know or whatever it is i'm not telling people to like i'm not saying don't you know don't quit your day job necessarily <laughs> like i i waited until it was a calculated risk but do you know what i mean it's like you have to do that and it's so exciting because there's so much adventure that awaits you on the other side of it you know there's so much magic on the other side of it wow what a great thing to predicate a move with. There's so many soul connections. That yeah. When I go there, this is how they're gonna happen. And experiences and, you know, the universe also is a 401k plan. I always say, <laughs> right? If I make the move, they're gonna double up and say- They we double up, yeah. You definitely have to meet them at it though. You know, you have to, you definitely have to- Up the ante? Yeah, you have to take those chances and you have to listen to the calls. Um, you know, it's, it was hard for me to leave the sunshine of California. I'm not, I'm not lying to you. <laughs> um, I did ask my guides to make it, I asked my guides to make it super, super, super clear for me. And they made it super, 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 super clear for me. So, um, you know, uh, we, we don't need to get into the details, but like they were not subtle. <laughs> oh, how helpful. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. And, and I want to I wanna ask you also about numerology and sure. mathematics and cycles, because based on what we said in your bio, right, that's mm -hmm. one of your specialties is numerology yeah, is. based on your name, based on your birth date. Mm -hmm. And so we come in with this set of principles about who we chose to be and mm -hmm. all these numbers show the way what we chose. So... We've got these mathematical cycles going on, but we also have free will. Yeah. I'm really wondering about the discernment between those two. How do we know what to take advantage of and what to let go of? Where does numerology come in and we're sort of a little bit helpless, powerless, or free will come in and that's what we follow? Well, so... I, I just talked about destiny. So let me, let me explain my take on numerology and, and your birth date and that kind of thing. So I'm sure everyone on your show is familiar with the principle that we choose our life, right? We choose our circumstances, right? So one of the things that we choose in addition to our bodies and our parents and the cities we grow up in and our ethnic, all of that, we choose that environment. So in order for you to embody certain soul lessons, you choose your birth date because numbers 
and planets are all uh, embodiments of vibrational frequencies. They, they shape energy. So like there's this mass of life force energy, right? So on the physical plane, we, we bring shape to that in a certain way. So our body actually brings shape to energy in a way, like we bring form to energy. So planets, planets don't make you do things. Mm-hmm. Planets are like saying, this is the ingredient that goes into this cake that you're baking, right? And numbers are well as well. It's like, so when, when you look at patterns, so basically um, we have this strange adventure called life on earth, right? <laughs> and then um, we have these signs and symbols and oracles and divinations in everyday life that help us interpret life on earth, mm-hmm. Right. So planets and numbers are somewhat of a, of a blueprint, of a, a map that helps you understand the energy that you chose to embody in this lifetime. Okay. So every letter of your name reveals uh, some way that that energy is taking form because letters are symbolic, um, sacred geometry really. Mm. And planets embody that as well. So when I look at me, I call myself like a jazz numerologist because I'm not really so much into the charts, like real technical, like, like that's like more like classical, like energy to me. I'm like, everything's an Oracle, Mm. right? And the universe is alive with messages for us. Mm. And so numbers and planets are an oracle that help you understand your potential. But they also help you understand what your challenges are because each planet, each number, each letter has its gifts and its challenges that are all wrapped up in the same thing. Mm. <laughs> right? So Because um, part of our life path, especially of the wounded healer, say, is about like you transform certain challenges in your life and those later become your greatest gifts. Sure. So the free will is how well you transform them. So the numbers and the planets and all those, the letters of that, they show you what the potential is and they also show you what the challenges are. And they're all one. Like they're actually, the challenges are the gifts and vice versa. Like what you're born to do, it's very, it's very rare that people just come in with, um, you know, the families that nurture their gifts and like the perfect opportunities to express their gifts. And then, you know, that's, that's a unique life path and <laughs> less they're, Bless them, those people. But, you know, most of us <laughs> are like, okay, uh, we learn through opposition here. So, like, when, when we're challenged with something, we have to rise to, like, meet that challenge, right? And that becomes your strength from within. So, you find the addiction counselors are often people who um, went through addictions. You find sure. the happiness coaches like myself who went through, like, a life of insecurity and depression to like find ways to become happy. That was a long time ago, but that was like how I, you know, the majority of my youth and young adult life was like fighting this uh, low self-esteem and depression. And I found my way through that. And now it's my greatest strength because it's, it's like an, it's an unshakable um, uh, emotional strength I have now. Uh, And, and not to say that's not challenged, right? Like the world right now is, challenging. (laughs) Um, You know, I'm a sensitive and I'm an empath. So like, you know, watching global warming, you know, that kind of thing. It's it's not easy, right? Um, Yet, I I saw this unshakable faith and unshakable um, response to challenges because I had to find that all from within, right? So our greatest um, challenges become our greatest strength. And that is where the free will is. It's like, Mm -hmm. And so the numbers and the planets help you understand what both of those are, right? And you don't need them, like you don't need them, but it's so helpful. <laughs> so why not, why not use them? Well, I'm curious then for your love life, yeah. many aspects. So you're married. 
yeah. when you were dating. Yeah. Crunching people's numbers. When well, you here's the dating. thing. I've been with my husband for 25 years. Mm. So, um, uh, of course, I was an infant when I met him. Just kidding. But, um, <laughs> but I, so I was still built pretty young when I met him. And um, I was always, as a child, interested in um, all things esoteric. Mm -hmm. And before I, before I met him, I still had those interests. And then I dated, you know, someone that was very, I should say generic. <laughs> he was more of a muggle, right? Like someone... <laughs> And I didn't date for a couple of years because I was like, I want someone who's spiritual too. Like to me, it wasn't numerology at the time because I hadn't even discovered numerology yet. Mm -hmm. But I was, but on our first date, we talked about astrology and I was like, and, and I'd been a vegetarian since I was 15. So here's the thing. Pythagoras mm -hmm. is the grandfather of numerology as well as uh, the mathematical equation. And he had a mystery school. Right. Uh, back in the day and, you know, ancient times, right? And everyone in his mystery school did music and was a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Now, I learned music at a very young age and I became a vegetarian at a very young age. It turns out my husband, who we met in acting school, he's an artist and he's a mystic, but he, when he was younger, was on a math and physics scholarship and he's from a family of musicians and he does all this music and he's also into um, astrology. And one of the first things that just made me melt was he's like, oh yeah, I was a vegetarian since I was 12. And I was like, huh. <laughs> and he's gorgeous. So <laughs> I was like, bonus. Um, so, but I feel like, you know, that was, um, it's a, it, I, I think we maybe had a mystery school life together, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't know numbers at the time, but it was important to me that the person that I was going to be with was not a muggle, Do you know, like they had to be mystic. They had to be sensitive. They had to like uh, speak my language. And now people say, oh, you're so lucky that your husband um, speaks your language. And I was like, no, this was my choice. This was my free will. <laughs> like, I wasn't going to settle. Um, so it's not luck, it's free will. I am very lucky that I met him. I'm not gonna lie to you about that, but it's also free will, you know? Because I, I said these are my standards. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That's actually a great example. And I gosh, I resonate so much with what you're saying. I had a relationship then a couple of years ago, 10 year relationship with a muggle for sure. Oh yeah, you don't can't date muggles. Muggle free zone. <laughs> Because it really squelches this enormous expression yeah. and my highest value is spirituality. Yeah. So what am I doing, right? Yeah. What, am I yeah. putting my own values? I'm in a going, in, going into our fifth month relationship. Oh, mazel. I'm still surprised every time I bring something up and he's like, oh, that sounds a sound bath. Let's do a gong bath. <laughs> That sounds amazing. Oh, my friend's a psychic channel and blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's great. Everything. Uh, yeah. and, you know, way more. Yeah. Spiritual. He is so interested and in he's working with friends of mine who are healers and, you know, taking these past life journeys. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, this is heaven for me. It is heaven. I can relax. This is a language I know. This is an experience I know. And from here, there's so many possibilities. So I love this example of, well, these are the parameters with which you came in and there is free will. And here's one of the ways you can make choices and you can either execute on behalf of yourself or execute and work against the grain of yourself. And yeah. Great. And as a happiness, I always say the key to happiness is to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is the one of the reasons I love numerology and astrology is it, 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 it kind of explains one of the things I always say, it's like, if you adopt a dog from a rescue, if you, <laughs> if you adopt a dog, then you want to learn about the breed, right? Like, even though all dogs need the same things, there's some that like, you know, more exercise or some that like mental activities. There's just different things that you would do with the shepherd rather than a chihuahua or a pit bull or a mastiff like they all have different needs right or huskies right so when you understand numerology and astrology it basically says 
these are your needs and they are, um, what's that word if you can't, um, like they're non-negotiable in a way, like they're must, they're necessities. Um, that wasn't the word I was thinking of trying to find, but like you get it, right? Like they're, they're, they're non-negotiable needs. For instance, someone with a four life path, and we can explain how to get a life path in a minute. Someone with a four life path craves security and structure where someone with a five life path craves freedom mm -hmm. and change. So there are certain people like, you know, who have five life paths, for instance, and they feel bad because they're like, oh, I've never been able to keep the same job or like, I never want to be married or whatever. And like, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's actually like written into their code that that's one of the things their life wanted to experience is like a multiplicity of experiences, right? And then a four life path may say, but I want more adventure, but I'm really more security oriented. It's like, you have to go with who you are. And in a way, I sometimes feel people need permission to be themselves, like they need someone else to validate them and say, that's okay. <laughs> um, really, the key to happiness is to be yourself. And, you know, I think also, Carrie, inherent yeah. that is also honoring the various parts. Mm -hmm. because there are, there's a lot of places, speaking of boardrooms, where the mm -hmm. different aspects of oneself gathers, you know... I have a really interesting chart and it's not exactly cohesive right? because um, there are things that would oppose each other, right? Mm -hmm. so, right there. so for instance, my sun is cancer, my moon is Scorpio, but my rising is Leo, but <laughs> my house of career is Aries, but <laughs> my house of relationship is Gemini. Good luck yeah. on that yeah. one. So, yeah. You know, there's that, and obviously there's so much more in the soup of who I am. And I have learned, because it used to feel really contentious. Like, yeah. Oh my God, here's this really sensitive, you know, home connected, kind of love, love, love mm -hmm. person. And then there's this like, give me the spotlight. You know, really. <laughs> the personality that loves socializing and extroversion. And, and also when it came to decision making, very different points of view mm -hmm. and choices. And I have just learned over time to like really find interest and value in everyone's voice. And also everyone's got a gift. Like my Leo belongs here. When I yeah. speak on stage, that's my Leo. When I lead a workshop, it's going to be a couple of them. <laughs> right, Leo, but I'm really sensitive to my audience and what's going on and what they need. So mm -hmm. something else is going on undercurrent as well. Mm -hmm. So I find that fascinating that our makeup with numerology and astrology isn't just this one beautiful dynamic thing. Like it's <laughs> a lot of different things that make up uh, the piece of heaven who we are. Right? Yeah, it's like what the ingredients that go into a cake and you're like, does it really use salt? Okay, and, and, and that's the thing. <laughs> Yeah. So it's, it's this sense that, and I say this all the time, like we, we do learn through opposition and we learn through polarities. Mm. If you had a chart that was all congruent and all like everything, all trines and like easy peasy, actually that's a very boring life. So when I was studying theater, you always, if the scene wasn't juicy enough, there weren't enough uh, what we call like obstacles. It's yeah. like in theater to create, like the pieces that create good theater is um, you want obstacles. You want some kind of contrary energy yeah. to make things exciting because that is the drama of life. And I know we like can't stand it sometimes when we're in it, but that is part of the journey of life. If you saw a movie or a play and the couple fell in love right away and they're just sitting around cooking oatmeal together. You'd be like, this is the boring thing I've ever seen in my life. And I just use the word boringest because that's how boring it was. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's just boring. So we have these oppositions that play out within. And this is, again, why in relationships, opposites attract. Because it's like you love someone enough to be with them and yet they have these opposing qualities that we're craving. Like, so like for me, like I'm, I'm such like this, like airy fairy sometimes. And mm. it's even in my chart that I wanted someone more grounding and serious. Mm. And then when I had it, I'm like, you're clipping my wings, you know, <laughs> but like now it's like my favorite thing. You know, you have to grow into these opposing energies in order to have this balance of heaven and earth. And we have that within our charts, right? Yes. So 
it's just, and you know, you look at twins, they have almost identical birth charts and oftentimes they are very polar opposite. Funny thing is when I look at the twins names, I can see how their personalities is going to, are going to be different mm -hmm. even in their birth chart based on the letters of their name. Oh, so calling all twins, go make an appointment with Harry. <laughs> that would be interesting. Oh, it'll be a fly on the wall and do a show. Just <laughs> Hello. Well, we're, I just want to take a moment to thank so much the sponsor for this show, Dr. Dane here for these many, many years supporting the show. And Dr. Dane here is a co-founder of Access Consciousness. If you're ready to do some massive energy healing work, or you just want to learn how to be a facilitator and be able to go out in the world and do it, go to Dr. Dane here, D-A-I-N-H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. Carrie, what are the biggest misperceptions about astrology or numerology today? Everything. So um, first of all, that they, the planets make you do things. Mm -hmm. Planets aren't making you do things. They're, they're showing you what the weather is. Mm. So it's like, and this is part of why I think it's very important that, and you know, I do these monthly forecasts, right? So um, I do weather forecasts based on what the patterns of the planets and the numbers are revealing themselves to be. So it's an as above, so below thing. Basically, when we see a shift in planetary activity or, or patterns, right? Patterns in planets or patterns in numbers. And usually the planets and the numbers are very much in sync with what they're trying to show you. Mm -hmm. um, they're basically symbolic representations of the shifts in consciousness, the shifts in energy around us, the shift in energy that help you prepare. So weather, when you listen to a weather report, weather isn't making you do something. Like you have sunny weather. It's not, I mean, it might make you feel like jogging or surfing or like having a picnic, but it's not making you do it, right? Um, it shows you what, where the tides are going, right? So they show patterns, they show trends. And again, this is our free will, like how to, how to use it. So with astrology and numerology, first of all, uh, one of the myths is that it's generic. It's not generic, but you can generalize these universal trends because they do show our collective experience, just like a weather, like everyone in the same city is going to experience the same weather at the same time, how you choose to handle that is up to you. So they do, you can generalize or universalize the patterns because um, it does show you what you will experience. Now, how that works for you in your life is totally unique to you, right? And you also have your personal planets and numbers. Yet we have like the year number, right? The year is, is the calendar shift that we all experience. And, uh, and Mercury retrograde is one example, right? Mercury retrograde doesn't make your computer stop working or it doesn't make... The thing about Mercury retrograde, that's another misperception too. Like I love- I Mercury. loved your I YouTube <laughs> video on that, by the way. <laughs> All the amazing things you do around retrograde. Yeah, thank Talk you. Talk about that. So, so here's the thing. So again, it's a weather report. So if you, if you have a weather report that says a storm is coming, you batten down the hatches and you prepare for it. And then you can have a wonderful time while the storm's happening. Like you can watch movies and have a game night and like, cause you know, it's going to be a fun snowy night or whatever. And have can cause you know how to prepare for it. Right. So what happens? So Mercury retrograde, Mercury is our planet of communication and it's the fastest moving planet. It's the planet of your consciousness. And the thing about consciousness is you were talking about access consciousness, right? The thing about consciousness is your Logical brain is only picking up on a fraction of the information. There's all this intuitive information that we need to catch up on. So every 88 days, three or four times a year, just clockwork. It's not random. I put it on my calendar. This is a Mercury retrograde time. It's three weeks, right? So I have it on my calendar and I know to prepare ahead. I'm not going to be launching something. I'm not going to be, because what happens with a retrograde, 
retrograde, when a planet appears to be moving backwards from the sun, from the Earth's perspective, that means that you're meant to catch up mm. with all of the lessons mm. that that planet is teaching you. So if you take that symbolic representation of Mercury, the planet of consciousness and communication and transportation, if you take that lesson that this is a time to catch up on things, and you know that, and you prepare that. So you use that time to like, don't write six more chapters of your book because your computer's going to break down. Revise the chapters that you've already written. Mm. Don't buy a new computer. Research the one you want to get next. It's mm. all that. And I found that when the trickster energy happens of Mercury retrograde, that trickster energy where you're trying to move forward, push ahead, where everything in the universe is telling you it's time to regroup, revise, catch up with yourself, collect yourself, go back. When you're going ahead that, it's like swimming against the tide. And that's when the trickster energy happens. So me, I know, okay, this, I'm putting it on my calendar. These are Mercury retrogrades. So I'm not going to launch a product. I'm not going to try to do too much. If I'm tired, I'm going to rest. I'm going to regroup. I'm going to revisit something. I'm going to revitalize my energy, rejuvenate my spirit. That's what the, especially the Mercury retrograde, it's time for journaling and really catching up with yourself. So it's, it's, when, <laughs> it's when we're trying to go against the energy. And this is what I'm saying. Mercury retrograde doesn't make your computer break. What makes your computer break is when you're trying to push ahead when your spirit is telling you not to. Mm -hmm. And that's when the computer's like, uh, peace out, peace out. I'm not having any part of this anymore. You're, you know, you're not going to move ahead when the, everything in the universe is telling you to, to go back. So, so it's not the universe making your computer break. It's you. <laughs> and you know, so many entrepreneurs need to hear this. Of because course. Because they work themselves to the bone. Yeah, and that's unnatural. And it's unnatural. And if they will take the, these periods of time, and I'm, I am now going to, I've been aware of it, but I'm going to do what you do and put it on my calendar so yeah. it comes up and I yeah. can plan ahead of time. That's genius. <laughs> and what about people? It's basic. It's not genius. I wish they taught this in elementary school. <laughs> it's basic, actually. It's fundamental. For those of us, like, this is not, you know, it's not my jam. So it's like, <laughs> I'll hear you do a video or I'll see, you know, I'm, I get your newsletter. So yeah. I'll read about it. I'm like, oh, okay, that's coming up. And, you know, I'll reference it. But, but this is like a different way of doing it. Yeah. Uh, and I like that. I like the, the heads up, you know, time for the spa. And yeah, it is time for it. So you see how that misconception that the planets make you do things like that's not true. The, the planets are showing you what the energy forecast is going to be based on the patterns. Mm -hmm. There's patterns and these are the planets are symbolic representations of the energy that we're experiencing here on earth. The numbers are, letters are, they're all symbolic. Another time is eclipses. You know, July of 2019 is going to be an eclipse season as well. And eclipses well, yeah. are a very emotional time. Everything that's been eclipsed from our consciousness comes to light. And there's a lot of revelation. So that's, you know, during eclipses, those are a, a universal heads up saying, hey, you know, this is a time of the unconscious. So this is a time when, Interesting. when like life gets in the way of what you think you want to do because you're going to have to deal with a lot of emotional stuff that has previously been eclipsed from your consciousness. So just take that time and know this is going to be an emotional time. Maybe I do want to have a retreat now. Maybe I want to keep a low profile now, you know? <laughs> Amazing. Just so, amazing because my boyfriend and I are considering doing just that in July. Yay, that's perfect. Although yeah. you and your boyfriend also need to know everything that's been eclipsed from your consciousness will come up for you together. So just keep that in mind. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Maybe like a separate, <laughs> like you separate. stay back to the resort, I'll stay on this end of the resort. <laughs> <laughs> but I love this stuff, like so growing, I'm, I'm in, I'm pulling in. What about somebody who's been adopted? Mm -hmm. the name? they know their date of birth, but they don't know the time or there's a piece missing. How do you figure out their chart? Well, this is why I love numerology. It's actually so much easier than astrology because there's really basically only nine numbers. And you know, someone who doesn't know their time of birth, it's, 
you can still look at the planets that were active that day. You can still look up, up like what the planets were. You just don't know what houses they're in. And so there's still a lot of information you can get symbolically from that. Numerology, I talked about uh, how you get the life path number. You basically just add the numbers of your birth date. So you add your, your two-digit month to your two-digit day to your four-digit year, and you add those across. Uh, there's different ways to do it. Uh, the Pythagorean system, you reduce numbers, but a simple way is to add those across. And then you get a, a two-digit number. And then you add the two digits together and reduce that to another single digit number and that's your life path number and so the life path number is very much uh similar to your sun sign in astrology it tells you a lot about how what your nature is how you do things what your likes are your your basic way of moving through the world similar to a sun sign now sun signs of course are very broad but there's a lot of accuracy to it so you said you're a cancerian sun right you're born um June 27th, and my life path is 11. Oh, so you're a master number, right. So you're going to, so even though, you know, each cancer can respond differently to a situation, you ultimately always do have that sensitivity and need to protect yourself, mm -hmm. right? So that's not going to go away. That's part of the Cancerian archetype, right? And, you know, I'm a Virgo. I have a lot of Virgo in my chart. Mm -hmm. And Virgos are perfectionists and they say they're always tidy. My husband had to teach me how to be tidy. I'm not inherently tidy. I'm a perfectionist with work though, mm -hmm. with my products and what I share with the world. It's like, it's got, I'm like, you know, <laughs> so like it, it just manifests in different ways, but it's still there. And I'm, and Virgos like to make everything very practical. And so I even said in my bio, practical tools for magical living. They, I mean, I'm not, I'm airy fairy, but I gotta be mad. I've gotta be practical airy fairy <laughs> because I'm a Virgo. So it still manifests um, somehow. And so when you know your life path number, um, that's very similar to knowing your um, the sun sign at birth. And you can really, I did. I focused only on life path numbers when I was still doing one on one readings. I got so much information just from the life path number that I just only studied life paths for about six years before I looked into any other numbers in the chart. Yeah, life path numbers, I mean, there's a lot that goes into all of um, the potentials and the, the fears around each one. So Is speak. there a way to, to take for someone you may be a colleague with or family member, relationship friend, and look at their life path and yours and see what works. And like the synastry. So here's the thing, and I have a very, there are numbers that are more compatible with each other, but mm -hmm. I'm funny that way. Like I, I, I see the beauty or the, you know, the, the challenges in each number. And so I mostly know like, like, the people on my team, for instance, I know all their life path numbers because I like to know how they like to work, right? Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. assistant, who I love so much, she's a seven life path and sevens love to research. <laughs> so I'm like, I give her projects and I say, go, go research this, you know? Um, and I, my tech person is a four and I love having a four tech person because they love structures, they love systems. And so I'll say, create this system for me. You know, um, it's, like, it's like having a pack. Of, I see everyone as a canine. It's like having a pack of dogs. <laughs> but you know, like what do you, and you know, um, another person on my team. Everyone's got their job. Is that and, what they, yeah, the and, and you know, sevens like to work by themselves. Whereas, you know, I have someone on my t team who's a two and two's like a lot of um, positive affirmation. And so I, well, I do that anyway, because that's just my nature. Well, twos are also partner people, right? Go yeah. And 11 reduces to two. And so they like working in partnership. And so um, it's actually my assistant's husband who I just hired who's a two. And so like they work as a team and they like to like, sometimes the 11s like to be in front, but the twos sometimes like to be behind the scenes. And so mm -hmm. Like, but they also like a lot of like affirmation and like, this is how you're doing, you know? So it's, I don't see it. I don't use it in terms of compatibility so much because I don't know. I, I just feel like 
you can get along with anyone or vice versa. You know, I see it in a sense like, how do they like to work? What is their nature? Again, it's the breed manual, right? <laughs> it's the breed manual for humans. Um, it's like, okay, how, and I think it's really important to do for children and spouses. It's like their language of love. Like you want to know their love language, you know, you want to know what motivates them and, and what they absolutely need to be happy. Are people with a life path of nine screwed? I mean, because basically nine is about completion endings, right? I'm a nine life path. That seems difficult, no? I think they're all challenging and they're all um, blessings. So like once you get over the challenges, yes, I always thought I was screwed. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was the one that I felt bad luck followed me everywhere until I learned how to navigate the universe through my intuition and through reading the symbols of the universe. And now I think like I'm like the luckiest person on the planet because I understand this stuff. So what become, what was your greatest challenge becomes your greatest gift. Now, if you're a master number, right? Like they have greater challenges, but then they have the sense of mastery that's rock solid and it's, it becomes like such an incredible blessing. Um, I also have a lot of my planets in the 12th house, which was you know, and, and a lot of like old timey astrology was like the house of karma or the house of karmic troubles and the house of prisons and the house of, you know, all this stuff. And again, you know, it's the house of the subconscious mind. So as a psychic, I, I actually am gifted at reading subconscious minds, right? That's actually one of my gifts. And as I learned to change my subconscious, now I'm like extraordinarily psychic and tuned in. And so it was my greatest challenge that became my greatest gift, right? Wow. So, so, and that's where the free will comes in. It's, it's, it's like, how do, you, how do you deal with the cards that you've been given? I've had astrologers look at my chart and be like, how are you even like functioning? Like I've seen charts like this and people just don't make it through. And I'm like, it wasn't easy, but I'm like, I'm doing great. You know, like I, because I, 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 know that our guides are always with us and I learned how to connect with our guides and angels and my own intuition and I learned how to read the symbols of the universe and so it's like a treasure map you know and I've gotten good at reading it mm -hmm. I have my challenges like everybody else um uh but the me that was then and the me that's now it's like you can't compare because um once you learn how to tune into your intuition and, and, and understand the support we have in the universe and, and read that energy, it becomes a more magical and fulfilling and joyful journey. Hmm. Well, you're listening to Dare to Dream <laughs> radio and podcast. You can become part of the Dare to Dream podcast community. You can donate to the show by going to patreon.com slash dare to dream. You have a big purpose to fulfill. So I ask, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? What would it take for you to feel completely free and bold? That. <laughs> That's where you want to be operating from, no matter what comes up. Dare to dream is always going to be free to you. We've been around for 12 years. That's not going to change. And we welcome your support. Because at patreon.com slash dare to dream, it helps us be sustainable, bring in the most magnificent guests, get amazing backgrounds like <laughs> technology. There's so much, honestly, in the admin direction alone that your contribution creates. Anything from a dollar on up. We're a podcast number one transformation conversation. So if it's in your heart, I am pretty grateful. Thank you. <laughs> patreon.com slash Dare to Dream. And if you're tuning in after we started, Debbie Dashinger, and I'm interviewing Carrie Samuels. You can find out more at her website, CarrieSamuels.com, also her YouTube channel. And you were just talking, Carrie, about angels. So I just want to reference that a little bit. And we also said in the very beginning, interesting times we live in. What would you <laughs> like us to know right now? What would be really helpful and guiding for us to hear? Well, um, thank you for that because it is challenging times, especially for empaths. Mm. And I feel that 
it's, it's more important now than ever to, as you feel like you can't make a difference in the world, because I know that's what happened to me, especially a couple of years ago, I just felt overwhelmed with everything, right? So um, more and more what I keep focusing on when I'm, when I'm living in my purpose and when I'm sharing what I can about the divine or, or um, the universe or our intuition and, and all these beautiful, this beautiful magical energy that we have around us. When I'm teaching, when I'm sharing, when I'm speaking, when I'm helping other people, I'm not thinking about all that, right? So one of the things that is super helpful is to know your gifts and share your gifts because that is the way that you're going to light up the world and do so much for, and if we all focused on that instead of, you know, you can't change everybody's minds, you can't change all the world all by yourself, even though you'd want to, as you focus on how you can make a positive impact in your way with your unique gifts, that is such an extraordinary way to get through the world. And, and the thing is we do have, I've done um, thousands of psychic readings and I've never seen anyone who didn't have angels and guides that were explaining why people had challenges and, and what their soul meant to grow with and how they're meant to get through them. So, so I want everyone to remember you have so much more support than you even recognize. The universe wants you to succeed. The universe um, has gifted you a team of helpers because Everyone knows that being down here is challenging. And so as you transform fear into love, as you transform um, any of uh, your oppressive energies into a joyful sharing of your gifts, every time you do that, it lights up the world so much. And that's why you have so much divine help is because you're meant to share your gifts in your unique way. And, and, and everything is aligning to support you in doing that. And besides because we've all heard this. If you want your angels to help, you're going to have to ask. They don't just step in. You're going to have to open yourself, really say the words in, inside or vocally, and then they can uh, assist. Are there other ways though, that we can collaborate, that we can start to bring our angels to be involved more in our lives? Debbie, it's funny you said that because I even said in my last video, I made a video about who your spirit guides are. And I said, I actually don't agree with that that um, they're not helping if we don't ask. Mm. My experience from doing readings, they're like, what <laughs> does it take to get through to this person? They're like, really? We've tried everything. Like they're, they're asking. Our job is to listen to them and to act on it. That's the free will that people are talking about. And I think it's been kind of like distorted in that like telephone game. Cause I'm like, mm. are you kidding me? They're so with you all the time. They are doing everything to try to get your attention. They're going into your dreams at night and giving you dreams. They're giving you like feelings and insights and they're downloading like thoughts into your head and they're showing you animal messengers. And It's your job to listen to the synchronicities. So that's the free will that they talk about. They are intervening. Are you kidding me? They are doing everything they can to get through to you. It's important to learn how to listen to your intuition. It's important to read the symbolic nature of the world. It's important to pay attention to the fact that like just what's going on in your head and your desires is not separate from what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. So if you understand that all the synchronicities around you can be messages, that, that everything you're feeling and thinking is a message for you, and you actually start to pay attention to that and pay attention to what's going on inside of you and act on your intuition, that's what you can do. They're there. They're always talking to you. Always. I have never seen where they're not like, whoa, mama mia. Like, how do we get through to this person? <laughs> they're definitely there with you. It's just, you know, and again, that's part of why I like numbers. They've become called angel numbers now. Um, I call them like divine, divine numbers because numbers, once you know the nine numbers and you start to see number patterns as well, mm -hmm. um, you'll begin to understand what those messages are as well. And I know you directed people to my website. I have a whole bunch of stuff about, you know, how to find your life path number and what that means and what these messages mean um, on my website. So um, if people are like, you know, how do you do this? I have a whole lot of information there. Um, 
but it's not just numbers. It's everything. It's, it's everything. It's animals that you see that are unusual or, or synchronicities. You hear things several times. One of the things I liked, I did in the beginning, I don't need Oracle cards anymore because I'm like a direct dial, but, um, I, I love Oracle cards because they're a wonderful way to communicate with your, your higher self and your guidance. Um, it's kind of like having a glossary if you speak a different language. You pull a card and it's like you get to understand that message more. So there's a lot of ways to, to connect with your guides and your angels. And listening to your intuition is the primary. Wonderful. What do we need to know? What is going to happen this year? <laughs> that we should be aware of. Eclipse, awesome, in July. Anything else that's coming along that we should be sensitive to ahead of time or no? Don't worry. I, I do want to preface it by saying this one thing. I have in the last week seen things happen, not to me, but to those around me. And when I start seeing clusters like this, mm -hmm. it makes me wonder. I've got a very dear friend, just left her husband after 20-something years, literally oh, just moved in her own place. She's doing great, but still, yeah. it's a, a big, <laughs> talk about big shifts. I have uh, two people in my life with cancer. One just got really um, not great news yesterday. And what is going on? Because it feels like a comeuppance of sorts. Or it is a comeuppance, actually, because that's uh, interesting you say that, because there's something, there's something in the moon's node that is um, called the south node of the moon, which is karmic energy. Hmm. And the north node of the moon is dharmic energy. So the north node is where you're headed. So this is our collective, right? The moon's nodes are collective. And they're associated with what, what happens with the eclipses. So this year, all throughout the year, and especially this month, the south node of the moon is being activated over and over and over again, which means that our karmic patterns that we've been repressing, like things that we haven't dealt with for lifetimes, hmm. are coming up into our consciousness. And boundaries are a big issue this year. Uh, uh, big, 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 big. Uh, we definitely need a lot of boundaries. And it's really important that you focus on your joy. Uh, this is a three universal year, which is all about using your voice and your creativity in a very unique and authentic way. So people are voicing things, right, for the first time. As these karmic, oppressed, and repressed energies are coming up, people are using their voice. Mm -hmm. So if you've been doing that, if you've been more authentic with yourself, you're going to have a, a much more joyful, easier time with this. Mm -hmm. If you've been repressing your truth and repressing your voice, um, the karm, karma is going to get you, <laughs> no, but, um, it's here to help you. Right. But, um, the more that you've oppressed and repressed, the more that needs to be expressed right now. So that's a lot of what's happening and will continue to happen. So the more you can use your voice and be true and express what's in your heart, including your creativity and your uniqueness, that is going to be the way to navigate the year. Okay. Thank you. That's deep. <laughs> It is, you know, helpful too for people. Karma, karma is either a, a bitch or, you know, it's something you're going to use. Kind of both, you know, like you're, you get it. Like after you learned your lesson, you're like, oh my God, I should have seen that coming because I, I knew this, you know, but I didn't do anything. And then um, that kind of stuff is surfacing now. Hmm. Well, we're almost at the end of the show. I have a couple of, uh, I want to see what I can get in here, but it is dear to dream. So I'm first curious, what's the dream, Carrie, that you have created that you're the most proud of thus far? Well, it's funny you said in the top of the show, I'm, I was almost at 2 million views. And as of today, I'm well past 2 million views on YouTube. And one of my dreams, uh, one of my dreams, I'm not, I'm not motivated by money or even lifestyle. I'm motivated by having an influence on a lot of people in a positive way that, that helps um, empower people to, to live a divine life and empower them to listen to their intuition, empower them to give them the courage to be themselves. And I feel that me having that um, impact and that awareness has helped inspire so many other people to do the same. And I'm super proud and excited about that. So that has been wonderful for me. What do you want to say here at the end to the listeners, to the viewers? 
Well, dare to be yourself so that you can live your dream. The more that you are yourself, the more that you are, will attract people and circumstances who love you and appreciate you for who you are. And then the universe will open itself up to opportunities for you to be the true you. Lovely. Thank you. Carrie, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been great to have you. Thank you so much. It's been so great to be here with you. Thank you. We have to do this again. I'd love to. And I end today's show with this quote from Jean Dixon. Our lives are programmed at conception and are endowed with purpose and meaning. Next up on Dare to Dream podcast, I'm featuring Dr. Laura Berman, the relationship therapist who's the host of In the Bedroom with Dr. Laura Berman on the Oprah Winfrey Network and also a regular guest on the Dr. Oz Show. I have been to her house. This woman is a pistol. I can't (laughs) wait to have this conversation. Like, she goes there. And it for sure, sex is going to be coming up in this conversation because she is no holds bar. So just join us for this very juicy conversation and we'll see where it goes. You never know with Dr. Laura. So number one transformation conversation, you're going to want to be here next week. You can subscribe to all of these so they come in your inbox. iTunes, easy peasy, dare to dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a five-star review. It's how people find us. And also on YouTube, youtube.com slash dare to dream. And I am on every major podcast site as well as syndicated on radio. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember the secret of success is having the courage to start in the first place. And as Carrie very wisely said, be yourself really helps the dreams to be created and the opportunities to come to you. Mm.